ordered that his body be exhumed and reburied with a full religious ceremony and honors due a craftsman of his rank. Early Masons historians regarded Hiram Abiff as a symbolic representative of Osiris, the Egyptian god of death and rebirth. In the third degree of Freemasonry, the candidate representing Hiram Abiff is raised from the dead by a special Masonic handshake known as the grip of the lion's paw or the lion's grip. In both Masonic and Egyptian mysteries, the resurrected god is buried on a hill in a tomb marked by a tree. In Royal Ark Masonry, the candidate for initiation is informed that the sacred name of God is really Jabulon. This name has been deciphered as a coded reference to the two major gods of the Middle Eastern fertility cultus, Osiris and Baal, combined with the Hebrew tribal god, Jehovah. In Masonry, God is also signified as the great architect of the universe, signifying the importance of sacred geometry, and also indicating that he creates nothing but designs and builds from that which has already been created. The political aspirations of Freemasonry revealed in their influence on the revolutionary movements and proto-socialism of 18th and 19th century Europe can be traced back to the myth of the Golden Age during the reign of Osiris and Isis and before the flood to the Babylonian and Hebrew myths of creation. Occult tradition alleges that Hiram Abiff was secretly a member of an ancient society known as the Dionysian Artificers, who first appeared about 1000 B.C. when the temple at Jerusalem was being erected. They took their name from the Greek god and possessed secret signs and passwords by which they recognized each other, were divided into chapters or lodges ruled by a master, and were dedicated to helping the poor. They established lodges in all the Mediterranean lands, and their influence spread as far east as India. With the rise of the Roman Empire, lodges were founded in Central and Western Europe and in the British Isles. The artificers were connected with another secret society known as the Ionians. Members of this society had settled in Asia Minor and were dedicated to the spreading of civilization, especially in its Greek form, to what they regarded as the barbarian world. Allegedly, the Ionians were responsible for the famous temple of the goddess Diana at Ephesus. Architects from this society, together with members of the Dionysian artificers, traveled from Tyre to work on Solomon's temple. Later, the artificers called themselves the Sons of Solomon and used his magical seal, two interlaced triangles representing the union of the male and female energies as their trademark. The artificers who settled in Israel founded the Kassidans, who were a guild of craftsmen skilled in the repair of religious buildings. Now, this new sect was instrumental in the foundation of the mystical Jewish group called the Essenes. The Essenes became famous through the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Tradition, Jesus of Nazareth was an Essene, and there are connections between this group and the medieval Knights Templar. The Dionysian artificers believed that the temples they built had to be reconstructed according to the principles of sacred geometry which reflected the divine plan of God. They constructed religious buildings to represent the human body as a symbol of the universe. They also promoted the political idea of utopia on earth which was expressed in symbolic form. The hammer and the chisel of the mason became the cosmic forces which shaped the spiritual destiny of mankind. The Roman architect and master builder, Vitruvius, born in the first century A.D., was influenced by the Dionysian artificers. His theories formed the basis for the architecture of the Roman Empire, and with the rediscovery of classical knowledge in the 16th century, also had an impact on the greatest architects of the Renaissance. Vitruvius's concept of the magical theater representing the micro microcosmos of the world as a symbol of the macrocosmos of the universe was repeated in William Shakespeare's famous phrase, quote, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players, unquote. 
and in the naming of his famous theater, The Globe, it is claimed that Shakespeare was a Rosicrucian initiate who was probably familiar with these ideas. Others take it farther and believe that the Shakespearean plays were really written by Sir Francis Bacon. In Masonic tradition, Caesar Augustus is the patron of the Masons in ancient Rome and is said to have been Grand Master of the Roman College of Architects. This society was organized into guilds with symbols based on the tools of their trade, such as the plumb line, the square, compasses, and the level. The college had initiation rituals involving the pagan myth of death and rebirth, which are familiar from the Egyptian mysteries. A temple built and used by the college was unearthed at Pompeii, a city destroyed by the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 71 A.D. Among the symbols discovered in the temple were the double triangle of Solomon, the black and white tracing board first used by the Dionysian artificers, the skull, the plumb line, the pilgrim's staff, and the ragged robe. The black and white tracing board was later seen on the battle flag of the Knights Templars, and then again on the floor of the cathedral as charts. Built by the Knights Templar. These symbols later emerged in medieval masonry and also speculative Freemasonry. The traditions of the Roman college seem to have been passed on to the order of Comacene masters who flourished during the reign of the emperors Constantine and Theodosius in the 4th century A.D., when Christianity was emerging as the dominant religion of the Roman Empire. According to legend, the order was founded by ex-members of the Roman college who were forced to flee from the barbarians. They set up their headquarters on the island of Comacini in Lake Como and in 643 were placed under the patronage of the King of Lombardy, who gave the order control over all the masons and architects in Italy. The Comacene order was divided into lodges, ruled by grand masters, wore white aprons and gloves, and recognized each other by secret signs and passwords. The order was responsible for the Lombardy and Romanesque styles of architecture, and can be seen as the link between the architects and masons who built the pagan temples and the master builders who erected the Gothic cathedrals of Western Europe in the Christian Middle Ages. There is evidence that the Comacini Masons traveled all over Europe, and according to the historian Beatty, even reached Anglo-Saxon England, where they built a church in Northumbria. Although the Masons who built the medieval churches and cathedrals were nominally Christian, the proliferation of pagan symbols and images in these ancient buildings indicates many of them were still pagans at heart. And folks, this is what I explained to you about the pyramidal structure of organization in these secret societies. Those at the bottom may go to a Christian church and really believe that they are Christian or attend other religions. But as they progress to the degrees of initiation, they are indoctrinated into the old pagan religions and the old gods come back to them with a vengeance until they reach the top they are no longer Christian, they no longer worship Allah or Buddha or any of the gods or religious beliefs that they had before. They're all gone by that time, and that's the purpose. You see, if those at the bottom were exposed all at once to what they would eventually learn through going up the degrees of initiation, none of them would stay long enough to get to the top. It is a process of slow, slow, but sure brainwashing. And it works. It works very, very, very good. Pagan symbols found include the Sheila Magid. These are crude representations of the naked female form in the shape of a woman with spread eagle legs displaying their genitals. They have been identified as images of the pagan goddess of fertility worshipped in Celtic times. Other carvings found in medieval churches depict monks and priests in sexual poses with wanton young girls performing homosexual